Hey guys, it's time for Breakthrough with Coach Lou. Coming to you live from Accelerate Life University, XLR8Life.com. Coach Lou will help you break through anything that's stopping you. Are you ready to get the motivation, the energy, the life, and all the success you really want and deserve? With no further to do, here's Coach Lou. Here's Coach Lou. Hey, good morning, good morning, guys. Welcome back to Breakthrough with Coach Lou. It is Monday morning. We are one week into 2023. Can you believe this? We're already into our first, second week of the year. Wow. And, you know, maybe you were on the goal-setting workshop with me at the beginning of the year. Got another one coming up in case you missed it. Um, maybe you weren't. Maybe you set some resolutions on New Year's Day. Maybe you didn't. Maybe you set a very clearly defined set of goals for this year. Maybe you didn't. I'm not sure. You tell me. You know. You're, you, you're, looking, you're looking at me right now. But when you look in the mirror, you got to look at you, right? Let me ask you the important question for today is, do you have a clear target? Do you see clearly where you are, where you want to go, what you want to do, and all that stuff? There we go. Come down just a little bit. I'm a little out of frame. So do you have a clear target for your goal? And you might say, well, I have several goals, coach. What do you think of that? And I'm like, great. Do you have a clear target for each goal? Or did you say, this year's the year I'm going to make more money? Well, how much more? Here's a buck. Get out of here. You know, it, it, that doesn't to say I want to make more money doesn't cut it. Now, I want to make a hundred thousand more dollars this year than I did last in net income, and that means this much a month, and this, this, and this, and you got it mapped out. Now we're talking, okay? So, 2023 is here. What about you? Are you stuck in 2022, 2021, 2020? You know, things haven't been the same since COVID hit. Da, 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 da. I was listening to something from Dr. Berg this morning over breakfast, and he was talking about one of the number one causes of dementia in brain illness is watching negative news and having negative coming at you all the time. And it's absolutely destructive for your brain and absolutely destructive for your emotions. And that's the thing. If you're stuck in last year and going, well, you know, there's still uncertainty, coach. I don't know. I, I, I'm not going to take any big steps until I see what's going to happen. Well, by the time you see what's going to happen, it's happened. You're in the dust and those who were ahead of it are gone. And you're going, wish I'd had the foresight they had. Oh, sound like past years? Hey, I know the past few years have been tough. Nobody can say that, you know, these have been the easiest years over the past few years. Now, some people have flourished through the COVID, the riots, the political unrest, everything else. Some people have absolutely flourished in that. They've gotten wealthy, filthy rich. They've, um, unfortunately, it's not always good people that have flourished through some of this. Some people have taken advantage. Some people have been bad and other people have been good. Some people have created some amazing things throughout this and you go, wow, some great has come of it. And other people have used it to manipulate and harm and other people have just sat there and gone backwards because they're going, I'm gonna wait till it's all over with. I want to tell you something, baby, it ain't all over with ever, okay? Life goes on and carries on. COVID-19 isn't going away. Thank God it wasn't what we thought it was where, you know, every third person was laying in the streets dead and there were bodies piled up and stuff. You know, and I know there's still people that'll insist that happened. Yeah, there, there was some, it wasn't, it wasn't cool. It wasn't good. But people are dying every day from all kinds of diseases. Okay, you know, we don't sit there and go, you got to lock yourself in the house and don't eat all this Monsanto food with all these toxins on it because it's going to give you cancer. You don't see the government cracking down on the food companies going, stop spraying glycophosphate on the food. It's poison. And then serving it to our citizens. Where are you guys? Knock, knock. That's killing off more people a year than anything. What about the drug trade? Let's not focus on giving out safe, clean needles. Let's focus on stopping the entry of 
these heavy-duty drugs into our country. Wow, we'd solve a lot of problems, wouldn't we? So it's not going to get on a, a, a news rant or that, but you, you look and say, you know, everybody is really paralyzed by the negative news, whether it was COVID, whether it was riots, political unrest, this, that, the other, whatever your form of uh, poison and toxin to slow you up is, and everybody has their favorite form of toxin to slow them up, whatever it's been over the few years, let's kind of clean house and get that out of here so you can go forward, okay? You know, and I commend those that are going forward. And I say, it's easy to say, let's wait and see. You know, if somebody comes to me and says, you know, especially somebody younger, and, ah, you know, we're, we're, we're young and we're going to have a baby and we're really trying to buy a property, but it's so hard and we're having to spend, whoa, slow down. Okay, the, the next few months, the next past year or two has not been the best time to buy property. Okay, and I know my realtor friends are going, shut up. Hey guys, we all know that after a spike like that, when it re comes down, there's another open floodgate. Business is business. You're going to do, my realtor friends, you're going to do business no matter what. In a great economy, you're going to sell. It's a little easier. In a crap economy, you get more inventory to sell. So don't worry about it. All right. So, you know, it's easy to do that wait and see. Now, I wouldn't necessarily run out and overspend for a property, but there's still deals out there. And if you can buy one, that's great. Um, if you can't, then make a plan and work harder to put some more money together to even have a, a you know, in six, eight months, a year, have even a stronger buying position because you have more of a down payment. There's always a uh, it's silver lining to all of it. If you think about it, you calculate it out, but you got to take action. You don't sit there and go, well, I guess I'm going to spend what we saved for a house on a vacation because we're not buying a house this year. Not a good idea. Taking a vacation is a good idea, but not with the money that you have earmarked for something else. Okay. This is not a financial training this morning and I'm, I'm diversifying here a little bit because finances tend to go along with goals and they're very easy to use as examples for goals. Okay, so those of you that have kept on going forward in the face of all of what we've dealt with in the past few years, kudos, okay? But let me tell you something. You gotta remember something. You have one life. This is 2023, we have a fresh start. I've noticed there's a really good attitude. There's a lot of people that are saying, you know what, I've had enough. You know, all the BS that's been thrown at us, they're mostly BS. Um, I'm not listening to that anymore. I'm not going to sit on Facebook and fight with people all day long. And this, I don't care what, what political party you are, religion you are, whatever, what your beliefs are. If you're wasting all your time fighting on Facebook, you're wasting your time. Okay? I realize that, you know, I'm a, a big proponent of keeping free speech. And I mean free speech, not just when it pleases certain people. Okay? You know... You got a tiny little group over here. Let me tell you, and I'm gonna I'm gonna come up with this, and I'm gonna I'm, I've, I've got to This has been irking me. I saw a post that people were upset that KFC is feeding the police for free. And I'm like, why? These guys are laying their lives on the line for you every day, and there's people like, yeah, there's you suck on a boot. Okay, well if you're not a criminal, you're not sucking on a boot or getting a billy stick to the head. A pilly stick, billy club to the head, or getting tased, or anything else. If an officer comes up and says, I'm going to ask you some questions, I need to see your ID, you go ahead and hand over your ID and you answer the questions, because if you hadn't done nothing wrong, you're not in trouble. The minute you start that, I know my rights, I'm this, I'm that, I'm special. Yeah, you're special, all right, you're an asshole. You're making the guy's job hard, and you wonder why he gets nasty. Hey, you know what? Officer pulls me over, says I need to see the registration for that trailer on the back of your vehicle. Thank you, sir. That's my answer. And they're like, well, thank you. I'm like, yeah, I've had three of them stolen over the years in business. And I wish somebody had pulled somebody over randomly to verify the registration on a trailer. Because, you know, you can stick any tag on there. And if you're not paying attention... They, they, you know, they, people steal them, take them over the border, whatever. It used to happen out in SoCal a lot. And they'd, they'd be over the border and gone and nobody checked. 
So, you know, it's like, yeah, thanks for doing what your job is. And that's protect the fact that, that my trailer is attached to somebody else. Or if you're asking me who the child in my, my, my seat here with me is, and I'm like, that's my daughter. And you, you know, go over to her and say, are you sure that's your dad? I'm glad you're doing that because if she was in somebody else's car, let me tell you something. I'd want you to make sure that, they, that she was supposed to be with that person. Okay, and these are if people go, oh, don't feed the police, they're bad. Well, the whole point to this is, again, KFC puts this sign out where, you know, police eat free if in uniform. And people are offended and upset by it. And there was even one jag off. And I'm sorry, he's like, it's bribery. And I, and I couldn't help it. I, I usually try not to comment on this. I, I look at it and just go, where's, where's the mindset? And I'm like, yeah, okay. So... I guess KFC is trying to get out of a ticket by giving you a drumstick. Come on, people. Okay? Nobody goes over to Christian Sharing Center and says, homeless people are stealing from our businesses and pillaging and peeing on our, the front of our building. Um, don't feed these people. <laughs> Come on. I mean, you know, they're, they're annoying in Longwood here. Yeah, we got some really, and there's some cool homeless people that are just, you know, they're, they, but we, we have this problem, but we don't sit there and go over and say, don't feed them at the sharing center. Maybe they'll go away. Okay. Every human being has a right to be fed. Every, everybody who's serving your community, firefighter, police officer, um, if, if, if you come in my business and I got a pot of coffee on, Grab a cup of coffee, my friend, before having lunch and we got pizza, which we rarely do because you know me and not a brown and a pizza. Have a slice of pizza with us. Not bribing anybody. It's a little way to say thank you. What, you know, maybe if more people did that, maybe if you go to the emergency room and a doctor saves your child's life, you don't just walk out of there and go, that bastard lives in that big house. He's making all the money. Maybe you, you drop him off a batch of cookies because he saved your kid's life. My point to this is not pro-police, anti-police, pro-government, anti-government, pro-homeless, anti-homeless. It's examples of the reality is, is how about exercising a little bit of kindness and gratitude in this world instead of having this, this oh my God, we're going to fight on Facebook about whether a business wants to give away some food. Okay, if that sign said, giving away chicken to, you know, drug addicted homeless people, there'd be people out there going, yeah, great thing. Oh, we're giving a meal to the police to protect your ass. Oh, you're horrible. We demand you don't do that. No, no, no. This isn't the way the country or the world works. You have a right to your opinion. You know, maybe you got pulled over and you got a ticket and it cost you some money and you blame the police officer because you were going 20 miles over the speed limit. Maybe he was even a little nasty because it was a school zone and his kid goes to school there. I would be too. I don't know. You know what? And there's maybe, just to acknowledge, there could be a bad cop out there that unfairly treated somebody and did the wrong thing. The same as there's bad teachers. There's bad this, bad that. But 90% of the teachers that your kids go to school with aren't a danger to your kids. There's always that one that slipped through the system. But my whole point in this really is, is wasting that time fighting back and forth about stuff. You got one life. Who's in control of the way you feel? When you look at something and you feel a certain way, you go, oh, and you get all huffy and puffy over it. Is it worth it? You look at somebody who lives different than you and you get all huffy and puffy over it. Well, that's a waste of time. Now, if somebody's coming at you with a weapon and you've got to get huffy and puffy and puff up and defend your family, that's a, a different huffy puffy. But somebody, somebody dreads different than me or they did this on Facebook. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Big effing deal, guys. Step up and realize you have one life. Who's in control of the way you feel? You are. Oh. Oh. Oh, so. Oh. So when the meaning hits me, it's my own reality. When something happens, the way you feel about it is your reality. See, take Les Brown, for example. All right, and I'm sure you've probably all heard of him if you've listened to motivational stuff. Born on a warehouse basement floor to a crackhead mother, abandoned, 
left for dead, mentally retarded, labeled this, labeled that, uneducable in school, the whole nine yards. You probably know his story. And the man gets up and motivates thousands of people. Okay, what was his meaning to all that? Well, that was preparation. Nelson Mandela, another one, locked up in prison for years and years and years. They let him out and he team efforts runs the country with the people that had jailed him for years. And somebody said to him, don't you just want to kill these people? We, they kept you in jail all that time. He said, it wasn't jail. It was preparation for either me to die in there and it would spark a revolution or I would come out and rule my country again. What a powerful, powerful person gives that kind of meaning when you go through the drive through and they screw up your order and you're ready to throw it in the face of the kid working there that just started. Hopefully that's not you, but we've all had those moments. Meaning is your reality. What you believe about it, what you assign to it is how you feel about it. Might not be accurate. Now we've talked about that before. Meanings aren't always accurate, but if they serve you in a good way, it doesn't matter. If they serve you in a bad way, you got to do something about it. By the way, life boosts coffee, don't forget. Mm. Absolutely love it. So the other concept I want to talk about this morning, and I'm actually running a little behind because I went on a little rant about getting your meaning into you. And I know that there's people who get mad and they're, they're like, oh, yeah, he's pro this or pro... No. What I'm doing is I'm getting you to take and dig in there and go, if I can push your buttons that easy and you start getting all bent, that's a problem. Because it's your meaning, your reality, not mine. But I'm teaching you a lesson. And if somebody logged off of the show because something I said they didn't like, then they're really not ready to be here yet. The fact you're still here, whether you agree with me or you're going, yeah, 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 or whether you're going, no, 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 I'm on the other side of that fence. The fact that you hung in and go, you know what, this is my meaning, my life, my goals. Not coaches. Even if I don't agree with him, he's got the tools I need. Maybe I totally agree with him and love him. Okay? The other concept I want to talk about this morning is when things are too easy, they're generally not worth having. And when they're, you've really got to put a ton of effort in, I hate to say when they're hard, but most of the time hard work goes into things that are worth having. Do you want the easy way out or do you want to take the way that makes you grow and gives you something? I've heard it eloquently put that what's too easy now leads for a harder life later. And what's hard now leads to a much more rewarding life later on. I kind of like that. I'll take the rewarding life. What about you? I think that would be the best of the best of the best. That would be my, my thing is put a little more effort in now so that you can have an easier life later. Okay, now, if, if you read the post that goes along with this on the, on the replay, um, we're going to talk about goals and setting goals. Goals should be outrageous. I mean, you don't want to set impotent goals. You know why? Because outrageous goals are exciting. They make you stretch. They teach you to get better. They teach you to get, it's better to get really close to something great than it is to exceed something impotent, okay? So we don't want to set up stupid goals that are so ridiculous, like I'm going to go jump on my trampoline and fly to the moon. I mean, you could do those two things separately, but you're not going to jump on your trampoline and, you know, put little angel wings on and you're going to glide up to the moon, okay? That, that's a stupid goal. Now, you could jump on your trampoline and then go get a hold of Elon and book a flight and spend a lot of money and he'll take you to the moon. It's doable, just not by jumping on the rebounder. But don't set impotent goals either. Don't say, well, I could never go to the moon, so I'm going to set a goal of taking a picture of it tomorrow night. Okay? Yeah, kind of impotent goal. Yay, look, I took a picture of the moon, so I feel like I've been there. Now, if you can find pleasure in taking a picture of the moon and getting a gorgeous shot of it, and you go, oh, that gives me pleasure, that's not a bad thing, okay? But that's not going to the moon, okay? So what we, what we really want to talk about is, you know, and I'm going, to give you, I'm going to give you a quick example, and then I'm going to get rocking and rolling here because I know you guys got to get to work, and i got to get to work, and i got to get the show produced. So 
um, I always have this argument with a friend of mine, but we're not going to get into that whole story. So let's say your mom, you're talking to your mom and you're like, you're making, you know, two grand a month right now, which is 24,000 a year. And you're talking to your mom and you say, my goal for 2023, mom, is going to be to make a quarter million dollars. I'm going to 10x this. And she looks at you and goes, you know, don't set yourself up for disappointment, honey. Yeah, that's kind of, that's kind of lofty. Um, you know, and you go, yeah, you're right. Uh, yeah, that's uh, that's not. It. All right, I'm I'm I'm, I'm make a goal. Why don't you make a goal of thirty thousand? Okay, you know, you'll probably exceed that. Okay, yeah, I'm a thirty thousander. And what you don't know is that Mama's talking to sis right now, and sis has the same income you have. And sis goes, I'm on a 10X, mama. I've been listening to that Grant Cardone guy and I, I want to do that 10X thing. And she's like, honey, you can do anything you want to do. You know, how are you going to do it though? How are you going to, well, I got to make this much a month. I got to create this, do, 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 do. She gets her to make a plan. All right. At the end of the year, you go to mama, you made $31,000. Mama, I succeeded. And she goes, yeah great. And sis comes in and goes, mama, I made $200,000 this year. I, uh, but I, I think I failed. I didn't make a quarter million. And mama being smart like she is, wanted to teach you both a really big lesson. And she looks at you and goes, how much money you got? And you go, 31000 she looks at daughter or, or brother, could be a brother, I don't know, and says, how much you got? Well, I got 200000 Who succeeded? You got 31000 Sister's got 200000 Sister fell short of her lofty goal. You exceeded your infinite goal. <gasps> Who's got more money? Who won? I, I don't even know. Sis might be unhappy with her 200 grand and you might be thrilled with your 31. So you could say, well, that depends. But if you just took it numerically, just quantified it, who, who, did, who did better? The one that came really close to a huge goal or the one who exceeded a very impotent tiny goal? That's my whole point today. Set those bigger goals. It is better to get really close to a big one and be so far ahead and gotten the growth and done what was hard to get the better than to do it the easy way and go, oh, I know I can do that. Well, I know I can do that really isn't a goal, right? Okay. So it's pretty cool. I'd rather have the amazing growth. How about you? Now comes the question. Okay. You're going, I know you're thinking this. You want to know what's, what's next, right? What's the next step? We well, got to tune in next week to break through with Lou and the week after and the week after. Or you can get this little jump start that I'm doing next week, next Sunday. And you could take the uh, goal creation workshop that I'm doing. I'm putting, and don't mind me, I don't mean to be looking away from you for a second, guys, but I'm putting in the chats, and you know, we're broadcasting on many different platforms. I'm putting in the chats the link to that workshop. It's a live interactive. We're using on Zoom, literally the on Zoom uh, platform, which is cool because it's just like a meeting. You can, you know, I can have you ask questions. We can interact. We can do case studies. Bam! Where I'm going to give you all of the goal setting, everything we're going to cover this month. My recommendation, you do both. You, you continue to tune up on the show each week, but do this workshop with me, guys. It rocks. And you're probably going, oh God, here we go. More money to spend, $29. If you are not worth $29, please turn this show off. Okay? We spend $29 in, on, on ridiculousness that, you know, cupcakes that make us fat. And, and burn our brains up with sugar, or if you smoke, and that's like two packs of cigarettes these days, or anything else, $29 for two hours of pure diving into how to get your dreams? Come on, guys, that's a give me. 
That's a giveaway. That's, that ain't making me any money anyway. That is literally covering some expenses of what we do. But my thing is I want you to succeed. You see, the reality of it is, is people say to me, you know, you do this show, you put hours and hours of creation and stuff into this. You guys get on with me for 20, 30 minutes and you think, oh, that's easy. But there's so much more that goes into this. Why do you do it? I said, because if you win, I win. If something I give you, you grow and win from, I win because that's my goal is to help you get to where you want to be. So when you talk about win-win, that is truly win-win. All right. And I know that if you're win winning, you're going to come back to me and you're going to take some courses. Or you're going to want some coaching to the next level. It's, it's not that I'm just going, I'm coming out here to be a martyr for you. No, this, this helps grow me. It helps grow our ability to reach more and more people, but we invest you into you and into us and vice versa as a community. Speaking of community, I got something and I, oh, I want to announce it so bad, but I can't. At the end of the month, I'm going to announce something that's huge. I got a huge announcement for you, but I can't say it yet. You ready for this, guys? Are you ready to get out there and at least today define the target or targets of what you're after? Get it clear. Go back and watch last week's show. The great thing is you can always go back to xlr8life.com and see all the replays. You can come say hi. I know some of you who know me know who this little one is. Oh, everybody's... Hang on. Short stack! Say hi to Maddie! Ow, that was my toe. <laughs> it's okay, sweetheart. Um, so Maddie sends her love to you guys. And yes, be on the show next week. We're getting ready to rock and roll. This is going to really kick 2023 off. It is my sincere hope that you got lots of, lots of good material from me today. Leave some comments, whatever you're on. Let me know you're out there. Ask some questions. I'll get them answered. You guys live with faith, energy, passion, Always live your dreams. This is Coach Lou getting ready to sign off and wish you guys the most amazing day ever. Ready to take it to the next level? Next level. Tune in to XLR8life.com for our live shows, encore presentations, life-changing courses, and live coaching with Coach Lou himself. As Coach Lou always says, live with faith, energy, love, passion, and always live your dreams.